Welcome to the Designated Drinker Show, the podcast that's raising the bar on craft cocktails. I am your host, Louise Solace, and with me is my very talented friend, the queen of my silver screen, the mixtress DC, Gina. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. With this COVID, Louise, it's a really nice uh, introduction, but I have COVID hair, so. Uh, it looks lovely. It me. looks good. It looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you at today? I am home. Look uh, at you. Finishing up a day of school, longing for cocktails, <laughs> hoping that we're going to get there fast. So, yeah, well, today, you and I are in control of that one, so that one's easy. Everything else, not so much. That's right. <laughs> All right. I have a little ditty for you today. I hope you like it. I'm ready. On a warm summer night in Camden, New Jersey, as the fireflies delighted the children and the cicadas serenaded the neighborhood, Richard Hollingshead, a fan of the silver screen and the sales manager of his father's auto parts company, had an epiphany. So you see, this budding entrepreneur was inspired, inspired by his mother's derriere, or rather, the discomfort she experienced in the derriere region while sitting at a traditional movie theater. So being the good son, Richard put his mind to finding a way for his mother to enjoy the theater as much as he did. And he came up with a rather genius idea. What if, just what if, there was an open air theater where eager motorists could watch movies from the comfort of their own automobile? So with a bit of innovation and good old trial and error in his own driveway, the drive-in movie theater was born. And in May of 1933, he opened his family-friendly Park Inn Theater, charging a whopping 25 cents per car, 25 cents per person. No one paid more than a dollar. So thanks to her son's ingenuity, enjoying the big screen was no longer a pain in the ass for Mrs. Hollingshead. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I, need the, I need to know who this is. Who is this? Who are we bringing on the show? That's so, amazing. speaking of innovative and inspiring entrepreneurs, let's introduce, let's introduce today's designated drinker, the one who has brought back the majestic drive-in theater experience to Alexandria, the CEO and founder of AXL Community, Kelly Grant. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Hi, thank you everyone for having me. It's so funny, so everyone knows we are here in Kelly's space, um, but because of technical reasons, we are really social distancing and she's in an entire different room. <laughs> so the good news is, is that ALX community has 25,000 square feet. So we have plenty of room to do social distancing. And what I was glad to hear is, well, in the 30s, they were charging about a dollar we charge a little bit more for Alexandria Drive-In. <laughs> it's not a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's definitely open air. And one of the things that we thought of is that in the middle of COVID, when you don't really feel comfortable going outside and you're not sure where you should take the children and where is your date night supposed to be? And in the midst of all of those things, you know, as a community, dedicated person, I thought, well, we could do something else. So we opened Alexandria Drive-In, let me think, it would be three weeks ago. So this Saturday be our third movie. I never dreamed of being in the movie business, and I'm certainly not a star. <laughs> and You're I a had star no idea eyes. what was going to be involved. <laughs> like the permitting, the police, the movie, the licensing, the screens, you know, where where you actually get parking cones <laughs> that you have to put them out. <laughs> and then there's tools and then scooters and bikers and all sorts of things. And, but it all came together because when I think at the whole, when you think of Alexandria, you could be so proud that we made it for the community, by the community, for the community. Yeah, because so, all of this goes to support well, uh, local charity, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, so each movie, we dedicate all the proceeds to Act for Alexandria and Athena Rapid Response. So our first six movies 
um, are gen- are going to be generating revenues for them. And we have about 875 people on a wow. wait list wow. for new movies. Um, so I think we're doing a few more. Yeah. <laughs> so and they sold out wow. like right away, right? Yeah, they sold out in about four days. And then literally, like who knew? I have about 60 sponsors who are interested that I couldn't even take. Because you only can have so many sponsors (laughs) and there should be value. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So there's tons of people that want to do the right thing for the community. And there's a lot of people that want to go see the movies. So uh, every Friday and Saturday night, I think for a while, I'm going to be under the stars. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I guess it's better than being under the hood. Uh. That's true. <laughs> Maybe in the back seat wouldn't be so bad, depending on who you're back there with, though. That's true. <laughs> so, you're, what are the movies? I knew, I know you, Jurassic Park, right? And like classics, like Back yeah. to the Future. So, we picked family friendly classics. And we had a lot of people vote on what they would want because maybe my movie taste wouldn't be yours. But So Jurassic Park was the first one. And as you remember, we were having a hurricane, which fit very well with a the theme. Yes, yes. <laughs> so under the stars with a lot of rain. Um, and at the last minute, it cleared up and everybody was able to come. And one of the little boys turned as I walked around to check how everybody's doing. And he said... I'm having so much fun. This is the best night of my life. (laughs) So, you know, how cute is that? I mean, he's probably six. So I'm sure he's going to have a lot of nights that might might be more fun eventually. (laughs) But in his mom's arms, in the back of their SUV, under the blankets, eating popcorn and watching Jurassic Park at that point was his favorite. Yeah. Um, then last week we had Back to the Future, and if anybody wants to go, you should check out our website because a few people actually dressed up. Oh, really? So including a dog with oh. big goggles. So his name is Scotty, <laughs> and he wanted to make sure that he was in the right spirit. There you go. <laughs> Love that. Um, this week we have... Um, well, we have th- four more movies, so we're going to see E.T., Field of Dreams, Mamma Mia, um, and Trolls. And Trolls is next week. That's really great. And again, the two are g- the, who are the two shelters you guys are supporting with this? So they're not shelters. Oh, okay. Act for Alexandria is a community-based nonprofit. Oh, they gotcha. represent about 170 nonprofits in Alexandria. Their mission is also to um, solve racial equality. Um, and I sit on the board there. Oh, interesting. And they raised $2 million for people um, that were being impacted negatively by COVID. Um, we raised another $2 million for Spring to Action, which is Alexander's largest giving day. And now we're really focused on training and add a people about allyship and this would be another way for them to continue their great work because as you can think about not everyone is in a position to make donations today yeah. Yeah. so it makes a lot of sense athena rapid response they go out in um, disaster areas and they teach people how to use the scrap metals or solar power to rebuild their homes, to wow. feed their children. Um, and that's all done by the garden, by building momentum. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's really, that, that's really, those are things that like, especially that I would never think about, like in the disaster, obviously there's lots of things there that the rest of us might see as uh, ruined or unusable and finding a way to not only reuse, but I mean, um, I mean, it's a, it, it seems to be a win-win where it's um, cleaning the environment, removing some things, that, you know, putting them, but putting them back to use, not just, they just don't go away. That's awesome. I think they do a great job. And that's here uh, in, 
in Alexandria. Well. Alexandria. Cool. So my partner in crime here is the garden. So the garden is a maker space and an event and training venue. So they are out in the Eisenhower area. So think about if you want to go weld <laughs> or you're making some kind of prototype, <laughs> this is where you go. Oh. And if you also wanted have training about um, anything from the military to leadership skills, they do that kind of training. They also have event space oh. where ALX really focuses on co-working, meeting space, and then we have our huge mission, which is giving back. And that is actually at the core of where Alexander Drive-In came from. Oh, that's awesome. So if everyone uh, everyone understands, I don't know if we are, like I said, we are in Kelly's um, space. It's a uh, communal work air space, right? Um, and uh, we're in Old Town, Alexandria, just right off the water. So it's a beautiful space and a beautiful spot even. So it's a good place to call home for working if you have to go do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so how did you get started in building this space out? What was the inspiration behind this, other than you're just crazy, wacky, and don't like to sleep, just like Gina? I know. Poor Gina. <laughs> I feel for you. <laughs> you know, my background, I was a startup girl. So I got inspired and excited when you were building businesses. And I worked in the tech industry for about 20 years. And I would take businesses from zero um, to a few hundred employees and about 20 plus million. And then I'd get bored because then they'd start getting the rules and we've got to have practices. And I didn't really want to do all that. <laughs> so I would leave them in good spots and where their trajectory was going to be great. And then I would find something else. And I had also had my own business at one point. So I kept thinking about like, what's next? And I had a couple of rules for myself when I thought about what's next. The first one's really easy. I don't want to work for or with assholes. Yes, Sorry if you absolutely. Can say that <laughs> you can say whatever you like. <laughs> so that's rule number one. And sometimes that's actually harder to do than you think. And the other one I really thought was important was, like, how do you help small businesses? You know, they're the bane of our existence. They help so all of us. And I don't think they have a real good home to go to. I don't think anyone really focuses on their needs. And I thought, I could probably do that. I could probably provide them space that they couldn't afford on their own. Because how many people are going to be able to start a business and be right on the water yep. and be able to have 11 conference rooms and beautiful finishings and have talks um, and have great restaurants and have great technology? That would be hard. And so I thought, let's find flexible leases for them and everywhere from one day to a month to a year, let's build in education that teaches them everything from how to use your p &L, how to drive sales, um, what's new on your taxes, um, to That's how do you really live better? That's a really important one. Yeah, I know. How do you live better? How do you hire? How do you coach? And in our first year, we did about 180 of those talks. So wow. I didn't realize that was too many. So I yeah. ever scale them back a little. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no. We probably we'll probably do like five or five to eight a month so that we don't exhaust people. And then I thought if I when I was a small business, I wanted to give back, but I didn't have a lot of time or money. Because all my money was tied up. Well, what if we made it easy for people? And that turned out to be really simple. I picked things that I loved and causes I wanted to help. And I asked my members, what did they think? And my members were really upset about homelessness. And I had to get over that we can't solve homelessness on our own. But we could help them. 
so we've made 18,500 sandwiches in the last year and a half. Wow. We make them for shelters. We make them for high schools. And we make them for some middle schools where those children aren't going to have dinner um, yeah. if we didn't provide it. Then I thought, well, what if we do clothing drives? What if we do angel trees? What if we support the domestic violence shelter? What if we really thought about breast cancer? And, you know, there's women today that don't have enough money or insurance to get a mammogram. Yeah. Well, if I collect $5 for a member, a mammogram only costs $200. So all of a sudden, my little ALX community <laughs> is giving back e easily with not a lot of time, and they can feel really good about the time and investment they make. So under our umbrella, we have a place to work, we have a place to meet, we have a place to learn, and we have a way to give back. That's awesome. I think that the, the really cool thing about the fact, like you said, it's at the heart of what you do. And if ever, anyone knows Kelly, she just exudes like it's just this energy, this positive energy that you can't help but be drawn to. I'm like a moth to the flame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's a negative connotation. I mean, it's a good thing. <laughs> um, but it, I think it's really you're right. Even in a space where I worked at a very large agency and had all the amenities and it was, you know, decked out, they spent millions of dollars in making the space. Didn't make it any better to work there, let's be honest. Um, but it didn't give you those other things. It wasn't a space to give back to. It wasn't all of those other things that you become this conduit of making not just a workspace, but like you call it a community and it really is. It's more of a, of a family um, where I, you know, I spent a little time here, unfortunately with pandemic, those you know, we didn't get to see each other for a while. Um, but your pe everyone here knows one another. Like when I come in, no one knows me that are coming here to, this is their space. And they just smile as if I'm one of one of them. And I'm just, I, I'm like, I, you know, it's, it's, it is a very nice space you have for a lot of reasons. One, it's beautiful, of course. But then beyond that, it's just being in the space feels very positive. Thank you. You know, I think having a pretty space is table stakes having a desk and a chair and something to pretty look at, we're supposed to. Yeah. The difference that we wanted to make, and every day we work hard to do it, is that people help each other. Like, so our, bus our businesses do business with each other. Yeah. Um, they socialize, they work together. We have a couple clients that have doubled sales. And when I say double, like I have one client that increased sales by $10 million Wow! from her contacts wow. at ALX. Actually, you can just go online and you can listen to her story. I, that doesn't happen all the time, but what should happen in a if community- If it did, I'd be like, hell, I'm, I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what should happen is we should help each other. Like think about the way you grew up and probably OA grew up. My neighbors were family. I would yep. walk over and borrow well, probably not the shovels, and I don't really <laughs> bake, but, but I might borrow the car, Rump. or I might borrow a tool, yeah. or I might babysit for them, and they do the same for me. And somehow, some of those values may have gone by the wayside, and I want to make sure that they don't. Um, and at our, at our core, we all want to do the right thing. I think sometimes it's just being in the right environment and being welcome to do it. And it's True. that simple. Now they help each other. So then they'll, they'll keep challenging me, you know, like, did you deliver the best food of the movie? <laughs> Have you, oh, wait, there's a, there's a new shop that's two doors away. And they were asking me, did I go welcome him? Did I bring him anything? And I was like, well, not yet. <laughs> but I'm going, I promise. He's on my list. I'm going to go over and check him out. <laughs> Doesn't sound creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why, Please. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Why the, like, how did you get inspired to do the drive-in? It's like, I, you, you're saying that you have all this space, but that there, there's like inspiration that comes for that. 
There's no way that you just, hey, I want to have 200 cars come up on a Friday. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> and I didn't know how. And some Saturday night you can come by, and sometimes I'm not sure. I still know how. <laughs> but no, actually, I, people are really having a wonderful time. It was just as simple as that my members and friends and neighbors are bored of staying home. Oh, yeah. That they don't always feel comfortable going to restaurants. And there's only so many walks they could go on. And they wanted to get out. And I thought it would be easy to help them find a way. I didn't actually know how hard it would be, but it it's worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> and ignorance is bliss, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh. No, it's cool. That's why I'm asking. Like, it was. Just... Yeah, it was just we. Th Alan at the garden came and thought this would be cool, and he's such a cool guy, and he's like a like learns on the fly, and I'm the planner. <laughs> so between us both, you know, he was dreaming about different things, and I'm drawing out plans with people, and. It just worked, and the city has helped. Um, sponsors have helped. All the volunteers, and there's usually about 20, 25, are my neighbors, my members, and friends. And Got I it. can't even believe that they give up all Saturday nights to come work at the movies and wave at cars <laughs> to have them come in. But they like, they like it, because again, it goes back to, how do I give back when I only might have time? where resources might not be the thing I have, but I have my own time, which is really valuable. So they arrange their own schedule. And so my volunteer crew shows up and they check everyone in. They're waving like they're coming into Disney World <laughs> and cheering. And then they check all the people to make sure they're having a good time. Pedego Bikes instead of roller skaters delivering your food, you know, we, we've stepped up a bit. Now we have electric bikes that See, drive your food safer. to you <laughs> and help us clean up. And the police department has volunteered their time so because they wanted to give back too. That's so amazing. when I, it's been good to see how everyone many, pull together. How many cars can you have at one time? We can have 215 cars. Um, there's three to four people per car. Overall, we'll have somewhere between, I don't know, high 3,000 to 6,000 people who will have gone through our, our events. And then if we launch our next series, then we'll be talking about, I don't know, probably 30,000. That's awesome. People. And all in social distanced, um, all in very um, safely done. I mean, the health precautions are uh, obviously at the forefront of everything. Um, so God, that's a huge undertaking, but that's amazing. And the fact, the other thing is that they're all sold out, right? I mean, you've got wait lists. Of we do. <laughs> so I held back about two or three tickets a night because somebody inevitably um, will tell me a story about their son's birthday or s have a story of somebody who couldn't afford it. And I'll give those tickets out um, to people that may not have gotten in, but I only have three. Yeah. <laughs> so really I think it's so that. cool. I Thank think you. it's great. And then you, well, bring, come. Do you bring food trucks so people can have snacks or what do you, uh, yeah. it's so cool. I love yeah, it. So there's between three and five food trucks. We're still learning the food truck thing. So <laughs> sure. Louise may have to help me. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm <laughs> here for you. You know I am. <laughs> some really I'll call cool Jean chefs. and she'll tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> have good food trucks show up who are ready to execute and have fun. Yeah. That's great. Oh, well. I think it's time to have fun, Gina. Can we have fun? I think fun? it is too. It is. I All heard right. that our designated uh, guest is not going to be making their drink. You're making no, it for it's them? A, it's the first time ever, Gina, I'm going to make a cocktail for Kelly, Kelly for our I, guests. I'm apologizing now. That's not how the drink <laughs> tastes. 
No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I have joke. learned from the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm gonna scoot down my camera just so we can all see what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna make, um, much like uh, Kelly's pride in Alexandria I mean, and Virginia and all things that are Virginia, I felt it was only necessary to make something that was from DC. So we're gonna make a <laughs> watermelon champagne Ricky, right? So super easy. Let me just do something really quick. Uh, super easy and really fun. So our Ricky would normally have two ounces of liquor, um, half of a lime, and soda water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, a little bit of watermelon, half of a lime, and we're gonna use gin. And I'm actually gonna use botanist gin. If you wanna substitute um, whiskey, you can. If you wanna substitute a different uh, melon, you can. Uh, yeah, I'm using is... honeydew today. Well, that's great. So we're gonna, so gonna leave your glass here and we're going to take two ounces of the gin or sorry, one ounce of the gin, excuse me, I'm making two drinks. I have, I have a friend and, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna put that inside of our jigger and then I'm gonna show you a trick. Watermelon or any kind of, um, <laughs> sorry, let me move this up a little bit. Watermelon or any kind of melon. I'm gonna have, you don't, to, I'm gonna have to ask the producer to help me. <laughs> you don't need to do anything super fancy. You just take your uh, melon and you just squeeze it in your juicer, in your little hand juicer. And if you don't have one, don't worry. You could use a fork with a strainer. And you're gonna get all of your juice coming right out for a cocktail. And for this drink, you want about two ounces. And if you can, I would take out the goop that's in here and not use it. Put it on the side. And we're gonna use one more. And so we get enough for two cocktails. And we're gonna squeeze it in. And put the juice in there. And you see how we're just getting it all in there. So this will how be much, super easy. What? How much juice? How much juice did you say to You're for gonna, two but cocktails? You had, did you pre-juice it or you're juicing it now? I did. No, I pre-juiced. So then one ounce. Okay. One, one to two ounces. Depends on how sweet you like it. Then we're going to squeeze the lime into the jigger and we're going to drop the lime in the glass. So this is actually the garnish for your drink. Is you take your lime, you squeeze it into your shaker, and then you're gonna take the other half of the lime and you're gonna use this as your garnish in your drink and drop it into your glass. All right, so now we have everything that's in this cocktail that you need right now. So we're gonna get a little bit of ice. I love being at home. I, I don't usually have an ice dispenser like that. Take your bath. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna shake this and you're going to strain it into your cocktail glasses that you're going to fill with ice first. So where, what step are you up to, Louise? I, I need down. to know how much gin I need to put in since it took one me so ounce. long to get the bottle open. One, one ounce. ounce. So two. Two Is ounces. It two, four, two yep. Okay, thank you. I'm making two drinks, too. Okay. I mean, if Kelly wants to invite me to her fancy um, in-house bar, I'll make I'll make the drinks there next time. You are welcome anytime. <laughs> oh, right. Kelly has a really impressive um, lineup of wine and uh, and beer and whatnot. I, I, mean, I could be into that. All right. So inside of your your shaker tin, let's just go over this really quickly. If you're just thinking that you might have missed something, you need to have one ounce of the gin one and a half to two ounces of watermelon juice per cocktail, and then um, a little bit of ice, and then you're gonna squeeze the juice of the half of lime, and then take the half of lime and put it into the bottom of your glass, cover it with ice. Are we up to the same okay. steps? Yes? Just gotta cover them with ice. Okay. Louise, and this is a service bar, I'd be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> well, I started off with not being able to get the gin bottle open. Good Lord, I'd be fired for sure. <laughs> I mean, you've covered some of the shifts in uh, suburbia, so, you know, you're not too bad. All right, let's shake. I'm getting excited. All right, so. <laughs> So now it's time to strain your drink. So just remember that you have two cocktails in your shaker. So you wanna make sure that you're gonna evenly 
disperse it because you're going to put champagne on top of the drink. So the drink is only should be halfway filled with this liquid, and then the remainder is the champagne. Okay. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a little Cremant, and I heard that you're a little, you're a fancy champagne drinker, so this is lovely. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of my favorites. Got a little split of it. I always tell everybody, use what you like to drink. You know, try not to uh, just buy something that's cheap for the sake of being cheap. And now we're going to pour into our glass. And here, here's my trick for everyone that's watching this at home is that you could pour it down a spar spoon. Oh. And if you could see, it makes really pretty little bubble. I can and, do that. And then you are able to move it around just one time and your drink is finished. Okay, I'm behind you still. It's so okay. The bar spoon. And you pour it down the bar spoon, you said? Yeah. And it'll follow the braid. Oh, I love that. I mean, that's what it was made for. Really? Inside of, yeah. <laughs> making a mess, but it's really nice. Luckily, <laughs> I have a wait. Do, I, saving the table. Don't worry. All right, Louise, That's I love it. Fun. Yeah, I like it. All right. So now we're gonna take. If you want, you want, and you and you need an extra garnish. If you're feeling extra, you could do something like that with your so watermelon great. or melon. I have Kelly, but who's you, just extra. So I'm gonna you run don't this need over to. to you. Okay, I'm gonna it's, run this over to you. Oh, so it look like you actually, this. you're gonna have a, a special a delivery. Snack. Gina, where did you learn these mad skills? Uh, I've been bartending for, I don't know, 20, uh, here, Matt. Sorry, I have a guest too. I have a guest too today. Um, I've been bartending like, I don't know, 20-ish years. And I own Buffalo and Bergen at Union Market and on Capitol Hill. And I also own <sighs> Suburbia, it's a little daiquiri bar. Portable for movie night, you know, mm. you never know. And that would be fun. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. So you were saying when you were saying that, I was like, oh, could be a All good right, time. All right, hold it up, ladies. You have to walk oh. to that show. Here we go. Cheers. 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 Enjoy. Mmm. Ooh, that's nice. It's just that a dry really drink. Nice. It doesn't that's have a lot the way of sugar. I like it. It's really about the um, champagne. It's, you know, it's just focused on a little bit of fruit. I'm really into like that, like dry, long feeling. You don't need to have a ton of sugar in your drinks, especially like if you're gonna have more than one, cause then you all know how the hangover goes the next day. So, well, when you so, hang around with, when you hang around with Kelly, it's just so sweet as it is. <laughs> 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 but this is really refreshing. Yeah. So that's super good. Try it with a different melon. Say like your favorite melon is Santa Claus melon. I don't know, or um, you know a musk melon or something. It's really, it's just really lovely all together. I love that. Yeah, Matt, I would, what? I was like, I would imagine like your watermelon cocktail probably is a little sweeter than this honeydew. Um, maybe uh, probably a little bit more um, aromatic. Honeydew is not as aromatic as watermelon, but that's about gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, is you Matt smell a lot more than you take. Is Matt away. drinking his cocktail with his pinky up? He is. You want me to bring him in? Bring him in really quick. Matt, come show me. So Kelly, drink. this is Matt is also a part of the show. He's our uh, photographer, but he's playing tech guy. Ooh. <laughs> I know. I'm not doing I'm this Matt. all alone. <laughs> and then <laughs> there you go. So now he's just drinking, and then he gets a fancy <laughs> straw. Oh, I want a fancy straw. Kelly, Thanks, Gina. Thanks, Kelly, Gina. Kelly, we'll have you on again, but you have to come to my house. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> You'll be like, what actually, are what are we doing? We could sit out here on their back deck, which is really nice because it's right on the it's right on the um, the wharf here right. in Old Town. It's beautiful. You win. We go to we go to Kelly's. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I bet I can get a lot of members interested in some alcohol. <laughs> and learn how to make it. It's funny how easy it is to say, I'll give you a drink, and they're like, oh. Um, 
let's talk after this. I'm totally into that. But until um, they can come, until we can come here and teach yeah. all the members, where are they going to go, Gina, to get this recipe? And They're going to the go to designateddrinker.show. Wait, where? To designateddrinker.show, and they're going to learn all of uh, the tips, tricks, how-tos, you know, whatnot, my favorite color. And, there you go. And we'll see you then. <laughs> yes. So, yes, they'll go to designateddrinker.show. You'll get all of Gina's pro tips. And the other thing we want to make sure is we'll have all the links um, so that you can get in contact with Kelly, too, whether you want to go to the drive-in theater or, or if you really are looking for a space to call home for your for your uh, startup business or one that's been in business for a long time and you just need a new beautiful space, she's got one for you. So, all right. So okay. now it's up to you, Gina. I love it. All right, Kelly, I get one question to show that's like the one I'm allowed to ask. So in this day and age, everybody um, identifies themselves with you know, a different sort of uh, spirit animal, and you're like, you know, I really identify myself with mm -hmm. like um, a garden spider because I, I take care of the garden, and yet I'm not, I don't bite, so people don't kill me. That's my thing, right? In this day and age, if you can identify yourself as one ingredient, a spirit ingredient that really, you know, captures your soul, what is it and why? A spirit ingredient. Yeah. Mm. All right, so my early background was food. Um, I think I've told Louise this, that I studied food, I love food. I actually would love to have a chef so I don't have to cook the food. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. I mean, I can tell you foods I love, how Just an I ingredient. would be associated. One ingredient. Single ingredient. One ingredient. Thumbs you up. Okay, so let's do chili and sea bass. So a little exotic, really um, harder to find. Oh. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> delicious almost every single time. And if you don't tend to it well, it might have a little sharp bite. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I think it's the, she's the first, the, definitely the first sea bass. <laughs> she is, but that was an amazing answer. Because she covered it, she brought the ingredient back to the spirited mm -hmm. animal, which I love. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. Well, she's definitely amazing. Thank you, ladies, you both are. Thank you for all that you do, and cheers. Cheers. I can't cheers. wait to meet you in person. Thank you for inviting me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for having us today. Anytime. The Designated Drinker Show is produced by Missing Link, a podcast media company dedicated to connecting people to intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Missing Link is a proud partner of Hearing Charities of America, a nonprofit organization that supports those who are deaf or hard of hearing. To learn more about HCOA or to find out about Missing Link's other podcasts, head over to missinglink.company. That's missinglink.company.